right. Well, it's been a while since I filmed kind of a scripted video, but um, of course, holidays, uh, Christmas, New Year's, all of that good jazz. Today, we're going to be going over some book reviews that I read in 2020 and uh, kind of the ones that I would recommend. So we'll talk through some fashion books, some business books, and then just some fiction books that I like as well. My name is Natasha Tuskovich. I put out new videos every week about art and fashion. Leave a like and a subscribe if you're enjoying the videos. So first up, fashion books. There's quite a few from Dior here because he is my favorite. Um, if you're gonna read about Dior, you might as well start from the source, his autobiography, Dior by Dior, written by Kristen Dior. This goes through his life through starting the Dior company and is an amazing glimpse into the fashion industry of the mid 20th century. It covers how he ran his fashion shows, how he set up the company, just all these sorts of neat little details. Another one on Dior, Girl in Dior by Annie Goetzinger is this gorgeous graphic novel about Dior's debut collection and it just has stunning illustrations. It's just a lovely little thing to look through. For more photographic uh, books, Vogue on Christian Dior by Charlotte Sinclair is an in-depth look at the history and it's just full of gorgeous photographs of vintage Dior throughout the decades. Next up, Vogue on Yves Saint Laurent by Natasha Fraser Cavassoni covers Yves Saint Laurent's rise, uh, his debut in Christian Dior and through opening his own name brand and through opening the first standalone Pré-à-Porter store. Next up, Vogue and the Metropolitan Museum of Art by Hamish Bells is a look over some of the most amazing styles, designers, and trends to pass through the Met Gala. It goes through tons of stunning photographs, all the amazing gowns and celebrities. It's just gorgeous. A little bit of a different one that I don't even know how I stumbled onto this book. Fashion Climbing by Bill Cunningham is a view of the fashion world mid-century again through the eyes of a hat designer right kind of when hats were still heavily in vogue like in fashion and kind of as they started to fall out of favor no no one wears hats every day anymore and what does that mean for a hat designer <laughs> um just a very uh kind of witty little fun look at his life all right next up moving into business books First up, we have, I read quite a few books by Mike Michalowicz this year. First up, Profit First. This one is how to set up your, set up your business so that you're actually making money instead of just bleeding out. Fix This Next is a good one to kind of streamline what it is you need to do next in your business. And Clockwork is a good all around one just for setting things up, making a good business plan, making sure you have every facet of your business and your organization planned out so that you can actually grow and scale. Coming up next, we have The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. This book covers how to make small habits work for you day by day so that you actually reach the big goals because you're doing all the little steps that compound along the way. Donald Miller, I've been on his um, mailing list this year and he, he just has such an interesting view on marketing and business. His book, Building a Story Brand, is very interesting about how to use the actual way humans naturally think about stories and storylines and plots to kind of frame your company and your marketing and just connect with people how they actually think when they're buying something. Um, he just put out a new book as well. I'm gonna read that this year. So make sure you check that out as well. Raise Capital on Your Own Terms is by Jenny Kasslin. Kasslin uh, goes over different options for fundraising that's not just like basically a bank lane, venture capital, or angel investing, which aren't really, if you're just a small business, these can be wildly either out of reach or just not actually what you want. If you don't want to sell the business, you don't want venture capital funding because that's what that's designed for. And if you want to keep the business after you're done with the venture capital funding, you're going to be in a terrible position. So this book goes over lots of different ideas of how to raise funding in more of a personalized, small business appropriate way. <laughs> Work Party by Jacqueline Johnson has stories just kind of about um, some female run businesses, how to overcome failure and how to actually create a business and work that makes sense for you and that you actually enjoy doing. On more of a practical note, Work Simply by Carson Tate is a really 
interesting time management guide. It covers different styles of productivity. So it's not just do A, B, and C in a row, have a to-do list, do this and that, um, because not everyone works the same way. So if you're tired of one size fits all advice for getting stuff done, take a look at this book because I found it had some really interesting insights that I hadn't seen anywhere else that actually were really helpful for the way I work. I definitely, I definitely think it's worth taking a look at if the, if you're still struggling maybe with procrastination or ADHD, um, this one might have some interesting ideas for you. And even if you're not, it has some interesting ideas if maybe uh, you're just stressed out all the time about getting things done. Uh, it has some different ways to view view work in general and how to organize yourself. Into Branding Again, Luxury St Strategy by J.M. Kapferer goes over the whole world of luxury business and marketing and in particular delves into what makes it different from the very top end of regular merchandise sales and why luxury branding is a completely different field than high-end regular goods. So I thought that was very neat because, you know, standard, you just think luxury is just at a higher price point, but there's a whole different style of marketing that goes into it, which I found fascinating. <laughs> all right, moving into fiction. So these ones are all just kind of uh, random books that I read that I enjoyed this year. So Starless Sea, this one is by Erin Morgenstern. This book is perfect for you if you love endless imagery, but if you don't, I would not recommend it. It's just loaded full of set pieces and fascinating characters who basically only exist to explore the nature of storytelling. It's a very meta book, very, it has a lot of free form. I actually found it had a lot of plot, but a lot of people who reviewed it said it didn't have any plot at all. So again, I think that really ties back into how much you appreciate that kind of I don't know, I guess more avant-garde, kind of more um, more meta, really, storytelling about, um, about fables and how stories transition, and especially how storytelling is transforming now with our kind of, with our modern society and how different types of stories are being able to be told now that were never, that you weren't allowed to tell a hundred years ago, five hundred years ago. Um, so it's very, um, it's very interesting to kind of, it shows in a narrative sense how um, how this is evolving over time and it's just beautiful, everything in it's gorgeous. Um, if you haven't read any Erin Morgenstern before and you're not sure if you'd like this one, check out her book, The Night Circus. More, slightly more traditional, it's still full of imagery, um, but more of a traditional narrative. And if you like that one and you want more imagery, read Starless Sea. If you think Night Circus is just, is too much already, don't read Starless Sea, just don't even touch it. <laughs> On a more scary note, Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno-Garcia is a really unique horror book. I describe it as a cross between the movies Crimson Peak and Annihilation, which I both love those movies. Um, it has stunning imagery again, really interesting characters. They weren't horror movies stupid, they weren't dumb, and just a kind of a unique plot. Someone in another review called it a mycological horror, um, and that, uh, that explains it a lot um, looking at it. So give it a try if you like horror. It wasn't overly gory or anything, um, so yeah, I recommend it. The Henna Artist by Alka Josh Joshi, set in 1950s Jaipur. If you can't tell, I like um, the 50s. Half of these books are set in the early half of the 20th century. Um, anyways, this one follows a woman who has to build a life of her own after escaping an abusive marriage and what she has to do to avoid scandal when her younger sister shows up. And it just goes through kind of how she runs her business um, and like all the henna she's doing. It's just really interesting little world. A Simple Favor by Darcy Bell actually has a movie now uh, with Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively. I saw the movie first and I loved it. And then I read the book and the book was absolutely worth reading because it goes in a couple different directions. There's some different plot twists and different, um, just different details about it that absolutely make it worth reading. Even if you have seen the movie or if you know you're going to see the movie, one won't spoil you for the other. So I really liked that about it. Uh, Poetry-wise, 77 Fragments of a Familiar Ruin by Thomas King was just a really witty, really, um, just really sharp, really well-crafted book of poetry. It had an indigenous focus and it was just very amusing and very, um, 
very crafty. One review called it mischievous, and I, I think that's a good way of describing it. Um, so if you like poetry, or if you are not a big poetry fan, this one actually might be a good way to break into it because it's just kind of funny, but still with a point. Paper Menagerie by Ken Liu is an anthology of short stories and they were all so unique and brilliant. A lot of imagery in this one too. Um, gorgeous little complete universes in each story. They're all unique, brilliant, just different. There's some urban fantasy, there's some science fiction, a whole lot of interplay and mixing between both. It jumps around in different time periods and different places. Um, just fascinating world building especially in short stories. Sea of Rust by C. Robert Cargill is a sci-fi western that follows a robot trying not to be killed in a kind of post-apocalyptic future um, where humans have actually already been wiped out. So it's all robots all the time in this book and it was just so neat to read. And very uh, moving plot, it keeps uh, going at a fast pace and uh, yeah, just a fun little read that you don't normally get to read stories where all the humans are already dead. So it was kind of a cool little little twist. The last one I have on this list today is The Golem and the Genie by Helen Wecker. Now this is set again at the turn of the 20th century in New York, one of my favorite time periods, and it shows um, just two different magical beings, the Golem and the Genie, kind of stuck in this world that they're not a part of in New York, trying to blend in and uh, make lives for themselves. So, and of course they meet and it's very, uh, it's cute and just a nice little story with, you know, again, a great, a great glimpse of New York. So I hope uh, one or a couple of those books are of interest to you. I thoroughly enjoyed all the ones I recommended here. And um, if you have any recommendations for me, please let me know in a comment. I'm always looking for new interesting things to read or new business books that uh, might be helpful. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys next week. Make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, and I will see you guys later. Bye now.